March 12th, 2020. This meeting will be held using remote participation. Um, okay. And the meeting is being video recorded for all of those participating. Uh, we always begin these meetings with general public comment. If anybody has anything they would like to um, speak about that is not related to issues on the agenda, this is your moment. And I'm taking that as a no. Uh, okay, yes, we have Jackie. Jack, Jack you're muted. Yeah. Sorry. That doesn't work. Can you um, just please, Jackie, state your name and your Jackie address. Dennis. 35 Warner Street. And I want to say really quickly that I've been to a lot of city Zoom meetings in the last few months and the historical commission is the one that's most comfortable. I really feel like y'all um, are on point with your mission, whatever it is. I, I just respect your work. And I wanna say that I see there's a minor revision in the, um, the demolition permitting process. You know what I'm talking about? on the agenda? Uh, yes, it's on the agenda. We haven't discussed it yet, obviously. Oh, I just want to put in my two cents because I know it's 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 just related that um, people in my neighborhood would really like to see the city notify a butters when there's a demolition permit issued in a residential area. I, I know there's nothing you can do about that, but I just wanted to be on public record. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Anybody else? All right, if that's the case, uh, we will move on in the agenda. The next item is approval of minutes and we have two sets, one from March 30th and one from May 21st. Um, unless anybody has any comments, I would take a motion to either approve both of these at once. I would move to approve both, both of them. From my recollections, they looked good. Second so from March 20th and May 21st, 2020. Yes. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Oh, we have to roll call. Sorry. Do. Uh, do it quickly. Um, Pauline? Yes. Martha? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dylan? Yes. And Craig? Craig muted. You're muted. Yes, I'm sorry. All right, thank you. All righty. The next one on the, on the agenda is review a proposed work in historic New Hampton Shepherd Barn pursuant to the preservation restriction on the building. And um, there were some additional items that were submitted, I believe, in relationship to this um, effort uh, that just came in at 5.30. Uh, I have not had a chance to look at those, obviously. And, and Lori can present all of this also. This was just okay. to, so that everybody had a copy. Um, yeah. Lori, I'm going to turn on screen sharing and you can feel free to. Do you want to just share the screen there, though? That's fine, too. Uh, see if you can do it. My bandwidth sometimes all right. causes an issue. Let's see. No, it's still disabled. Should be all set now. All right, let's see. Um, let's see if I've done this properly. Yes, good enough. Well, thank you so much for, um, I have two items on the agenda and we'll begin with the sh Shepherd Barn, but I, I wanted to um, describe two projects that we'll be doing, uh, submitting to the Community Preservation Act uh, for the application next week, we submitted the eligibility form. And so uh, the fir first is really, um, it it's a little bit flipped. You mentioned Martha uh, Shepherd Barn, but the first, uh, th there's two projects. One is the balustrade um, on, the, on the Damon house. And if this is an aerial view, so you see the big parking lot of the Talbots, the so-called Talbots lot next to us. But the reason, and, and our building is circled, but you can see the exterior perimeter of the balustrade here on the building. Um, so it's not totally uh, 
around the uh, the top of the of the roof of the Damon House, but mostly. And so, um, in the last five years, we've we've painted the building, and we've um, had shutters custom made. So it's really sort of back back almost to its 1813 glory. The balustrade had been on historically, then it rotted away. And then in the uh, 1990s, it was reconstructed and put on. And so you can see in this image, this is um, sort of from our access into historic Northampton, that side of the building, not, not along route, not along Bridge Street. But there's, there's a finial missing over here, which happens to be on my desk in my room. So it's not, it's not missing completely. It just happened to fall off last, last fall. And then um, similarly, there's a missing board here. If you go to the other side of the building on the Talbot side, there's more pieces uh, that are either pulled away or, or rotted. And so uh, we'd like to request that in this letter of, we'd like to request a letter of support from the Historical Commission for our CPA proposal. And this would be one of the two projects that we would be requesting um, monies for in terms of the rehabilitation uh, and um, preservation of this look. We, I have a consultant, a carpenter coming on Thursday to give me an updated bid. We have bids from 2018, but prices uh, of wood have really shot up. So I wanna make sure we've got a good, a good number. So any, any questions related to that part of our work? Is the missing, um, the missing part from the aerial view, the part that was missing, I think in the back, is that- oh, it's, it's actually, that's how this that part here, that's, that's, that's because there's a, the roof comes in. Ah, okay. So it wasn't, yeah, it, it's, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's not like it fell off, <laughs> that, that was intentional. Um, <laughs> But um, but the falling off finial, um, fortunately, it missed Betty and Paul Schul as they were walking into the building <laughs> last fall. But that, that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's uh, providential, I guess, or something. Um, so, <laughs> any other any other questions? Okay. So then, and then the next piece is. Um, I, I think most of you are familiar with the uh, last year in 2019, we ap uh, applied for funding through the CPA for work on the Shepherd Barn. And at that point, um, um, and we, re we received that grant along with some other monies to do some other repairs uh, um, uh, on the property and other, other work here at Historic Northampton. But sort of at, at that point, our, our our perspective was okay. You know, let's let's do the work that needs to be done to open the building. And we're aware from a 2015 survey of some of the areas, the corner posts that have some rot, um, some of the other structural weaknesses. Um, and and for those of you who have ever been here, you know that the barn was used. It was closed to the public in around 2007, and since then it was more or less used for storage. So this summer, um, what we'll call phase one was not only we had uh, Jack Sobin, who many, some of you may know, he's a timber frame architect and of national and international uh, fame. He lives in Windsor and he came down and he did a, an assessment of the barn as well as these architectural plans which are used and then we hired Sharon Merman who is from Florence and is a fine furniture maker plus is a just a, has her degree in public history so it's like every single thing we needed in a single person who happened to be available and who was willing to to help oversee the the emptying, inventorying, measuring, and cleaning, and proper um, storage of all the items, which there were about a little over 600 artifacts um, that came out. The, the, um, the benefit, I would say, of, uh, for us of going slow, which was really so much due to the pandemic, is that it made us realize 
um, that we needed some more some more work done. And so here, here, just for those of you who haven't ever been here, here's some interior views of the Shepherd Barn before um, the items were removed. Uh, these are old dove coats for when um, people were raising pigeons or in trying to encourage pigeon, pigeons to lay eggs in, 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 um, in the building. This is, a, this is the space, the so-called L that's been used for variety of purposes and was rehabbed in, um, 19, in the 1990s also. Um, some cool historical uh, uh, identifying marks for how to how do you um, put this timber, this particular building together? It was a, um, so Jack Sobin really kind of, he's really like a forensics architect and he found all these details, some of which are details that we were aware of that um, we know we need to repair, but uh, found a number of features that we, we never ever knew about. So the great thing about doing that work is um, the story of the barn becomes that much richer for when people eventually can come back and, and see it. And then, um, and then here, here's the ex exterior. Our, during the last six week, weeks, we've had a number of artists come through because basically what we've re realized is that, you know, there's a farm museum over in Had Hadley and to only use this building as an ancillary exhibit space is just um, not using it as effectively as possible for all kinds of reasons. And in our initial proposal, we thought that this L star area would be used as a classroom and the other areas, uh, the main portion of the barn would be used for programming and, and uh, exhibits of some of those impressive signs that you saw in the last image. But what what time has allowed us to do is, is think more carefully about the future of the barn and how we can use it and how the community would best benefit. So um, I'm just gonna show you some of those ideas and then come back to um, specifically my questions of you uh, as, a, as a reviewing commission. So these are just some, some pictures. Uh, one of the issues of course is the animal access into the barn. We got some drainage issues. This is a, a patio that was installed um, in the 1990s. And these are the beds um, that are used by the Bridge Street School as part of their Sprouts program. This is the, the back view of the barn. So the barn was constructed, we know from dendrochronology work um, where the timbers were cut in 1804. And so it was probably, the building was probably built in 1805 but it wasn't initially built as a barn. That's one of the things we learned from Jack's report. It was built, um, we don't know what the purpose was and we don't know when it was moved to the site, but the doors, the, these, um, these so-called main, main doors on the barn, they were added afterwards. The, originally the barn had a door on this side and a door on this other side. And because it sits right on the property line, um, you would never have a door uh, leading right onto your neighbors. And that was the, the, the next law is the, is the parsonage. So anyway, so now we're calling this next phase, phase two. And what we've realized is that we, we need to think carefully about um, what we do. And one of, the, one of the issues, this is a 1976 survey that was done. And I talked to a surveyor who says that, you know, that the, the drawing is probably pretty good. Apparently this surveyor uh, had a really good reputation in the 50s and this was done in 1976 and apparently by the 70s his work was less good. But for us one of the issues is that you can see this is the part the so-called former parsonage lot that's not owned by Historic Northampton. Um, it's owned by a guy named Todd Marchevka who some of you may know. And here's the barn which you can see is like so close slash right on the property line. So we wanna make sure um, exactly where that line is as we, as we move ahead with the, with the um, work on the barn and because we're gonna need permission from Todd to work and have access to that, that side of the property. Um, and the survey, it's not only gonna be like a, 
a survey that we'll need, but we are going to have a site plan done so that we get all the spa elevations so that as we uh, landscape outside the barn because the sills are all rotted and we're going to need to um, replace those replace those structures and probably use these uh, helical piers, which are new new way of um, of uh, at the corners, which will cause less alteration, so less archaeological um, impact and. Um, and, 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 and we, got some, we got some serious drainage problems, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. So anyway, this would be a survey and a site plan that would help us not only figure out sort of where are things in place, uh, but also those spot elevations for us to figure out how we can get ADA access. Um, this, this is just, we've hired Ann Marshall and who is an architect who's worked with Kuhn Riddle, some of you might know her, and um, Mike Hankey, who's an exhibit designer. They're uh, partners in, uh, in their work and also partners in life. And we've worked with them in the past. And these are just, this is the existing conditions of the barn and it shows where the bathroom is currently. And Anne has just worked up some um, some different scenarios for how we can use the use the space most effectively, and part of it would be as this kind of multi basically a multi purpose space. So it wouldn't be just for exhibits, but it would be for classrooms and workshops. Kind of some of the messy stuff that we absolutely cannot do inside our main exhibit uh, gallery right now in the Damon House. But also, and uh, this is a question that I'll stop talking soon and ask you, we're proposing to put on some kind of lean-to style addition off the back. It would be unconditioned space. Um, possibly there's a door here, a sliding door right now on the back that would be function kind of like a pocket door so we could pull a stage out in front so that um, people could, um, gather and watch whether it was music or or uh, experiential theater. Betty and her work bringing these different theater people in, um, they're all excited about this really interesting, you know, timber frame structure. So, and it enables us to then hide away these, all these chairs and tables when, when the space is maybe functioning as a dance floor or, or just as a, a space for other activities. So, um, that's that's piece one. And then these are just some drawings. I apologize, they're a little bit light, but we're going to, on the interior of the barn, we're going to remove a, a balcony that was put in, um, we're not sure when, sometime in the probably mid to late 1800s when it was converted to a barn, and then a, a stairway that was built in the 1970s, because the balcony is really rickety. Um, 80, it's the, everything is out of code about it. If we were to bolster it, it would, it would be a, a, a lot of work, but, but we have a question in terms of, is that balcony providing any, you know, lateral structural um, work? And so, but this shows you sort of with views of the, of how, how it will look to a certain extent, once we remove that balcony, so you can really see that that volume and the kind of the beauty of the of the timber frame timber frame structure. So, so my questions for the um, for all of you is right now uh, the there are two style of roofs. There's a pretty thick slate roof on the main portion of the barn. And then on the L, um, there is a shingle siding. And everything, this, that we've had work done on the, on the slates in the past, but this roof completely needs um, to be repaired. And I talked to the uh, roofer came by today. And so there's a couple of options, um, but I just, one is to take these shingles off and replace it with metal. Um, that would enable us to put solar panels on it. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we also discussed the possibility of just removing the slates just because slate roof repair is expensive but um it would cost us about another forty thousand dollars if you even thought it was a good idea in terms of switching out slate from metal um but one of the ideas is to potentially put solar panels on that roof. So before I go any further, I guess I just love your feedback and any questions that you might have. So Laurie, are you asking us for feedback on the interior of the barn and the roof? On, I'm asking you, I guess really your purview mostly is the exterior, right? But I'll, I'll take any comments or um, feedback that you that you have. Well, I think, okay. So I, I just want to get some clarification on this. So the um, proposed work in front of you, in front of us now, where that we're looking at um, is in regard to the preservation restriction. Um, it's in our purview to review this. Are you planning on applying for CPA for this? Yeah. Okay. So I think the interior does, would be part of that um, because it's, you know, we're looking at, um, you know, a whole project. It's not, um, it's you know it's different from being in a historic district in which you're visible from the street. We're looking at a whole pro you know the whole project from okay. a historic preservation point of view. Yeah. So yes, I would. Yeah, um, yeah Sarah, that, that's correct, would, Martha. So the the preservation restriction would um, encompass any major work, whether it's interior or exterior, yeah. visible or not visible. Right. Okay. So so let's just go back and so the, what you're asking us for um, are weighing in on is the interior of the barn and the you know, removal of the balcony essentially in the stairway and the opening up of the barn um the roof and then what about the sheds on the back is that something that you wanted us to weigh in on as well, well yeah i just be yeah the so the cpa well so the cpa proposal that's coming mm -hmm. or due next week is, is, is asking for support for a structural analysis so that we make sure that the building really is safe for the public to be inside um, and make sure that the, the roof is, um, can the roof loads are okay based on what's uh, in place or, or how the repairs are done. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, there'll be the, floor, so this is important. So we know that the sills are totally rotten. Um, and so, you know, there'd be some helical piers at the corner posts um, is what we're talking with uh, engineers and timber framers and the architect about as a solution that's less intrusive. But the plan would be to, in order to access that most easily, would be to there's an in some old uh, horse stalls to to remove that remove the balcony remove all the flooring um, and then take up uh, some of the clapboards on the on the exterior retaining as much of the exterior fabric as possible but in order to you know improve the ability for the contractors to um, access the sills and uh, make the other repairs that are now, I don't think that we've found so much more than was detected in 2015, but now that all the artifacts and other items are out, you know, it's just possible to finally get at those. Okay, so going back, so the application that you're going to be making for CPA is just to do the structural analysis or is it to do these other items as well? Well, we have some funding. This is uh, interesting. We, ha we have some funding about, uh, we have $170,000 uh, or so for the barn um, from our last CPA grant. Um, and that was, you know, fixing the sills, getting some better lighting in there, um, you know, making, making kind of the necessary repairs that need to happen in order to get the public in there safely. But 
as time, uh, you, you realize that you have to not just kind of replace the sills in place, but because in order to get them um, up out of the soil, there'll be some need for um, uh, some kind of exterior access that's ADA compliant. And um, so that's one, 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 more, one more piece that we actually hadn't maybe thought of carefully when we first applied. Okay, so are you saying to me then, or us that um, you're applying for funds for this uh, CPA funds for the structural analysis and for the drainage analysis and the drainage analysis. Okay. Um, and then any of these other items that you've mentioned? We're not asking for funding from the CPA for those, but they are, I guess they are in the works. So, um, so yeah, we need, we need to be, uh, talking with you more and maybe not all for this meeting, maybe a follow-up meeting to talk about those interior details and interior changes that we're considering to make sure that they're in compliance with the restriction. Okay. okay. Does any, do any of the commissioners have uh, questions for Lori? Right. Yes, the, uh, thank you for the thorough presentation, Lori, it was great. The, uh, the facade of the barn, of course, is thanks Northampton, your CPA dollars at work. Where is that facing? What, how are these, for solar in context of these roof facings aligning up? Okay, so, so I think you can see my arrow. You can see my cursor here, yes? Uh, yes. So this mm -hmm. this roof more or less faces west southwest, and this roof is more um, more due south. But, but that's the view from Bridge Street. Yeah. So Looking yeah, faces if you're Bridge, Street. At Bridge Street or behind the Shepherd House. This this is the this is the view. coming down our driveway. Right, it just looks to me that the main roof, the larger array there, that that looks like it's got a pretty significant sway in it. And that is currently clad with, with slate. Yeah, pretty. Is that correct? I don't think it'll take a solar array on top of slate with that roof, it would have to be uh, beefed up at least. Yeah. Well, th yeah, this is this is where that structural analysis, I mean, just in terms of currently in terms of the s snow loads and mm. um, I mean, the, I, you see this, uh, this, this is minor, but this is a, this stove pipe will be removed. And so slates on the back will be replaced also. The roofer today, you know, they they solar panels are are installed on slate roofs in Europe, um, and there are these uh, footings that can be installed. But this is just kind of floating the idea right now. The solar panels that we have on the on the uh, one roof of the nineteen. Um, 86 edition on the Damon house that provides about a third of our electrical needs. And so, um, but this is a, you know, this is a more historic building. So we just, this is just kind of like a question mark. What, what you, what you all think about um, if the slates were removed and a, a metal roof were installed, or if we were able to install solar panels, would, would that be something that, um, Well, it's I, not on our plan, right? I mean, it's but it's something we're talking about. I mean, it's not like in the CPA proposal or anything like that. But it's yeah, the solar panels would be off the back of it, off of this view of it, the back. No, they'd be right. They'd be right here. 
or right here? Oh yeah, but and that faces the rear of the that faces the rear of the property. No, that faces the front of the property. Oh, it does. Yeah, let me let me see if I can go back a couple. I thought that was the rear. Here it is. I for one would love the on this, especially in the local historic districts where, as I mentioned before, chimneys that are now out of service were going to be years. Two years from now, we're going to be approaching a lot of question marks about chimneys. People are going to want to put in solar arrays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have to be the trendsetter here. I'm sure that there's conversations in other places, maybe maybe not too far away. With this, I think I think this is a good segue into that conversation for us as a as a city panel to talk about these issues. And um, it's my take on it right now. I mean, this is something you can just kind of mull on for tonight. Um, but we, I guess one of the things thinking is if if we had enough money, I guess uh, on the roof, just knowing how slate roofs, they, were, they last a long time. This was probably put in around the 1880s or 1890s by the Shepherd family. So it was, it was a wealthy family and it was well done and the slates are thick. Um, and, you know, our roofer has, is Jim Flannery, who some of you may know, and um, he thinks it's in pretty good condition. He's done all the repairs uh, for us in the last four years since Betty and I have been here. But I guess my one thought was just depending on the load on the building, um, would a would a metal roof be better? And also, you know, so that since it's going to be used as a three season public space, that we don't have to worry about leaks, or we don't have to worry about leaks on artifacts or dust or those pieces. So, but again, you know, this is like another big dollar expense for us at the moment. Um, but we just, I don't know, we just wanted if. Uh, your immediate reactions to um, my immediate reaction was I think you said that it was going to be about forty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars and so I was you know, when the number came up I was just thinking I would leave the slate roof on you know and see how much law how many more years you'll get out of it and then when it reaches the point that you have to do something with it, make a decision then as to whether you're going to go with um, a metal roof. Yeah, this is, your, your, your opinion is what a lot of people are recommending, sort of if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. We're also losing a lot of slate in the city too. Um, so that, that fabric is kind of disappearing. Mm. Um, and I, yeah, I would agree with Pauline on that. And also too, Laurie, you know, maybe the technology in solar um, is changing so quickly. So quickly. If there is technology overseas, you know, how, I guess it depends on, you know, what the emphasis in this country is, but um, how long is it going to take to get here? And it may not be that long. Um, so in the time may come sooner rather than later that you could actually put, you know, solar on this roof, or if the roof were short up inside, you could do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would agree with Pauline about that. Right. Anybody else? Is, um, Barbara, do you have any and comments? Well, I'm a board member also. We haven't really discussed this this much in, in our board yet either. But certainly when, you know, when I got solar at my house, I was told, you know, my roof wasn't in great shape. And they said, you have to have a really good roof because you don't want to have to take the solar panels off when your roof needs work. So you know, my inclination would be what Pauline said. Um, yeah, and the other roof that definitely needs replacing now, I think, you know, some sort of, you know, those, I assume you're talking about some sort of those corrugated, you know, yeah, what people talk about as being a barn roof. Um, that's, that's sort of typical. It's actually somewhat typical in this area too, that that might be okay for the smaller, for the L for now. And I don't know, we, you know, as Craig said, we haven't really been faced with, say, in the Elm Street Historic District with ruling on solar panels yet. So we haven't really talked about that very much. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, yeah. So let me just show you the last 
uh, oh, I'm sorry. Look at that. I had it. I had the <laughs> better drawing a, a photo right next to it rather than going back. But here's here's the um, here's the Goshen stone and brick walkway patio, and um, I include this because this I put this tube on because before the downspout ended right here and all the water just went right underneath. Uh, this part of the building. And so I do know from uh, past work that basically all of these sills and probably some of the joists underneath here are, are also um, a mess. Mm. So, um, so, and you can see here that the barn, I know you've got other projects, so I don't mean to take up too much of your time tonight, but you can see the barn is just like, it's at grade, it's, it's right in mm. at. So this, this is the part of the sill that will be um, lifted eight, probably eight inches, which will help with interior elevations. And the barn will also be on one grade um, for the floor, but um, it then sets up uh, exterior access issues too. And just trying to think in a holistic way, like, okay, when these barn doors are open and you have people inside and maybe people outside, um, how, do, how do you make this area functional, but then um, meet ADA requirements as people get in and out? This, this, this section of the barn will probably be the ADA bathroom and we'll put in a new door here so that the public can go in and out. That's, that's our current thinking, but uh, but clearly, we're going to have to come back to you as we move ahead because, um, you know, your your input is going to help uh, determine what what our next steps are and how our plans come together. Um, Dylan, do you have any comments or questions? You and Quiet. Um, <laughs> I. I mean, I, I concur. I think holding off on the roof question is, is the most move right now. Um, I also hate to see any more slate from the city when it's avoidable, but I understand all the financial challenges of all these projects. Um, having watched skunks and cats and groundhogs go through that little hole there, I and also having climbed around inside this barn quite a few years ago when you all let me go in and photograph a bunch of those signs, um, it's, it's really vital work. And I, I love the idea of creative reuse of this space in order to save this space. Um, I have a great goal, a problem with any of or, or even the addition of, I'd be interested to hear what other members think about the addition of this uh, storage structure. I think this is a great project overall. Anybody else? So, Lori, I think um, you know it, it's great for you to check in on the on a, uh, check in with us on these things, and um, I think uh, it might be helpful to us to maybe get this in the form of a you know a short report um, that we could read ahead of time, um, so it's organized and we have have our questions. Um, you know, we can formulate our questions before you appear. Mm -hmm. okay. So that would be helpful. I know everything is complicated today because of the pandemic, but so that would be helpful. But I think, um, you know, I, I think it's great that you're moving ahead with all of this. And some of it I would consider to be rehabilitation, but it's not being used as a agricultural or carriage barn anymore. And um, that's part of the preservation, you know, way is to be able to rehabilitate when needed. So uh, I think that I don't, you know, have an issue with the sheds going on the back or anything like that. I think it's what you have to do to make it a functioning space. And as long as it's done in keeping with the scale, the materials, um, you know, the period of the property, I think it, it's perfectly fine. Does anyone want to comment? And I don't think we have to vote on this. I don't believe, Sarah, that's probably not right. We just, um, you were looking for our comments. Yeah, if you're not taking any action on the preservation restriction covered work at this point, then no vote is needed. But Laura, you were looking for some CPA support letters also, correct? 
Well, that would be that would be great um, if you were willing to write a, a letter of support for the structural analysis and drainage drainage analysis, um, so that so that fifty years from now, or or God forbid, even <laughs> sooner, <laughs> there weren't more uh, structural or drainage issues that would compromise the barn's integrity. I think that would be really appropriate. Does anybody have any objection to that? No. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. And I, I apologize. I have to admit, I wasn't kind of really um, aware of the ex exterior part. Um, I, I was thinking only, only exterior. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad to have come. Um, let me just, let me just, um, I'll just, show you for those of you who um, who ha unlike Dylan who don't come by here all the time let me uh, just kind of something nice to see so here's the shepherd uh, house porch on a rainy day uh, back in the spring and um, then we um, ripped out all the shrubs this was CPA funds the, you can't see it here, but there's some rot on all of these columns and the floor was rotting so badly that um, you could actually, believe it or not, fall through. Uh, that's because there was no uh, gutters here. So then we had the work done with CPA funds and some private funds. And this is what it looked like. Uh, this, this detail here was carried over. This is porch was put on in the 1890s and um, when, when it was, when the, this is how it looked in the 1890s. So we really restored it to its 1890s beauty. That little tiny stairway was, was um, done at who knows when, but um, so, and then, and then now it's not the most beautiful painting picture, but um, it, the floor is the, exactly the same color as it was historically. Um, and it's all been painted by by volunteers. So there's that. And then here's this shepherd house front portico. This is a cool project. You can see the rot here. Um, Doug Ferrante, who some of you may know, he did a lot of this totally pro bono for us. Um, took it off because the detail is unique. He brought it back to his shop and um, not only did the detail, but even the molding <laughs> uh, had to be uh, fashioned in his shop. And then he first put this piece back on, but then realized like actually all of this was terribly compromised. So he did the entire, entire front. And when I posted this on Facebook, it got, it was shared so many times, including to the state of Washington, it was 10,000 views. And then um, since so much of the problem was because the roof was leaking, Jim Flannery came by and he, fixed the roof and he put a really beautiful piece of uh, copper copper trim. So it's really, it's really like as beautiful and then volunteers painted the whole thing. So um, that's that's two of our uh, capital project successes for 2020. So that's great. That's beautiful. Thank you, Lori. Those are, it's wonderful to see that. I know the CPA committee will enjoy um, seeing the porch too. I remember from the site visit we had <laughs> And you told us not to get on the porch. So that's good. Yeah, it's very nice. Anyway, well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate all the time um, you gave me tonight. And um, and I'll provide a short report and keep you posted and get so that we can make sure that anything we do is in compliance. Lori, did you want to talk about the small grant application as oh, well? Geez, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you, Sarah. So yes, there's one more thing, which is... Um, we have a, for those of you who have been in the building, we have a room that's uh, for our archives. And so we're asking the CPA, and I would like to ask you for a letter of support for this small grant where we're asking for $3,000 and we are contributing $3,000 ourselves. Um, and it's, it's basically to remove everything in that room, to shore up underneath that floor, and then to do um, improvements because some of the there's some ceiling damage and some wall damage and repaint the floors. That's kind of the stuff on our on our nickel. 
And then the CPA piece is really to get um, nice shelving because some of it is sagging. I sent the um, proposal earlier to you and at the very end, there are some uh, photographs, but it's kind of very much symptomatic of what happened to historic Northampton uh, during a period of time where items came in, came in, came in, and you know people did the best they could, but there's items stacked on top of items, um, difficult to access. And these are the archives that really the public and researchers and all of us um, really rely on a lot. It's newspaper clippings, it's postcards, it's photographs, it's the old business directories, as well as a small library. So if, if you would be willing to um, skim through that proposal and, and write a letter of support uh, for that, it, it would be very, very helpful and much appreciated. Oh, great, Lori, I do have a question. Um, I just, I wanna be clear about the location of the, is the archives room upstairs? In the no, it's on the first floor here. Okay, okay, yeah, so it's not the basement. No, no, no those okay. are, and, and those spaces as well as we have, um, I don't know, 10 or a dozen monitors now. So we're monitoring humidity and uh, yeah. temperature all the time. So we're, we're, so we're on our way and this will be, uh, once we get past the pandemic, you know, we can have volunteers help us take a lot of that stuff out and then really beautifully organize it. So it's a much more functional, professional space. And so this, this is, it really gets at kind of the, by buying the right kind of shelving and organizing, it really is going to help with the long-term preservation of the, of the documents, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so the and, reason I asked that question is just, I know that um, CPC funded um, uh, shelving and that kind of thing for the basement, but I think my memory was that was mostly for paintings, correct? There, it was multiple things. I mean, oh, okay. for my time, and it, uh, a, a proposal that Nancy Rexford um, or, organized and um, oversaw. That was a lot of shelving where it's really, you know, furniture and um, other kinds of big collection items in both of our um, collection storage areas. Okay. So, and then, and then part of some other CPA money was for um, picture framing uh, wall that was put in along yeah, with that was compact that shelving. Was, yeah. Okay, because I think the CPA, the CPC will ask that question. That's all I'm saying, because it's something we had, you know, they had supported in the past. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just, you know, kind of this historic houses are not really meant to be um, museum storage. So uh, doing best we can. And, and um, anyway, this will be a major improvement uh, in this room. I mean, as a, like, I guess it's maybe two years ago now, the room never had lights. So we, we put in lights, that, that's a help. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. You had to go in with a flashlight. That's what we did. <laughs> or only in the day. <laughs> right, right, you had to make sure that. <laughs> but, and like, but now like because we have lights, we can actually have uh, blackout <laughs> curtains so that the items are not getting damaged by UV and the process. Do other commissioners have uh, questions for Lori or no, objection to supporting this application? No, I, I think it's, you know, you, you have to be able to uh, find it and see it in order to use it. So, you know, it has to, it sounds like a, it's a, it's a good use of money. Yeah. And these were the, um, I fully support it, but these were the next steps recommended by the state historic records. For yes, thank you so much. So, yeah, we had two assessments done this year, and these related to archival and collection storage, and and both of these independent uh, consultants basically said, you know, space is a huge issue, your storage is a huge issue, and this is top on the list. So we're just following those recommendations from these outside experts, which were so helpful for us for trying to figure out, you know, what, like getting their opinions in terms of what the priorities are. So it's not, um, it's just very uh, thoughtful 
uh, versus reactive. Okay, great. Dylan, um, not Dylan, Craig, do you have any other questions? I think you're still there. Are you not? Maybe you're not. Yep, I am. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. All this. Thank okay. you so much. Um, so I think we can move on. Um, I, I guess what I'm thinking is here, we may want to, um, I don't know that we need to vote on these letters of support, but we may want to make sort of a blanket recommendation at the end after we've looked at all of them. How do people feel about that? That sounds fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Lori, thank you. Thank you all, all so and much. Thanks for your hard work too. It's, um, we all admire what you're doing so much, you and Betty and everyone else at Historic Northampton. It's a great, um, such a great resources for the community. And I love all the virtual stuff you're doing. <laughs> well, we got a big program okay. tomorrow night. We have about 300 people signed up for tomorrow's presentation. So that's, that's, great. So that's great. Thank you all so, so much. And, and I look forward to um, getting more input from you. Thank you, Sarah. Great. Thanks, Lori. Bye-bye. All right, um, so we will move on to uh, the request for uh, support for uh, the, the, so there are four other applications here we haven't looked at yet. Um, Martha, you can do the, um, the ones that I'll be presenting last so that other people can move on. So the preservation plan and the canal, you can move Okay, on. so then we would have um, the Lilly Library. And Laurie talked about the Shepherd Barn. Yeah, okay. So Lily uh, Library, is there someone here from the library? Is that I, Adam? I'm, yeah, I'm Adam. Oh yes, your name is on this. Thank you for coming. Okay, thank you. Um, and I just not... wanted to give a short overview. That would be great. Okay, so um, is everybody, first of all, is everybody here familiar with the Lily Library? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the, the stairs, the external stairs on the library, which uh, come out down towards Meadow Street, that's the original entrance to the library proper. So the library was originally on the second floor and the stairs are also um, the emergency exit for the second floor. And they're also the primary exit for the library during, um, for the second floor of the library during COVID. So in order to keep everybody moving in one direction, since the library is open, uh, those, that's the exit. Um, the way that the stairs are made, there was a brick masonry support um, that was put up and then the stairs were built on top of it. And then the exterior wall facing was added. So the granite, which you see, um, if you look at the stairs from the exterior is a facing on the interior structural brick masonry. The brick masonry has largely collapsed, leaving the granite to support the stairs. So um, on one side, the brick masonry is completely gone. And on the other side, it's substantially damaged so that I'm not really sure it's doing much of anything anymore. We've had a, a mason and a structural engineer look at it and they both agree that it absolutely needs work to be saved. Um, we're trying to come up with a plan to do that. Uh, but basically if the, if the option were to do nothing, then the stairs would become unstable and fall down. So they have to be repaired um, for a number of reasons. So I'm not exactly sure what uh, I'm, I'm supposed to establish at this meeting, but um, those are the state of affairs as they stand right now. We, we do not have an actual estimate, but it will probably be less than $10,000 to fix the stairs. Do people have questions for Adam? No, it sounds like it's pressing. You know, it's a pressing issue and it needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Uh, yes, absolutely. The, these, the, the stairs will not go another season. Um, so the interior and exterior walls were bonded together by concrete that, not concrete, um, mortar that was in between them. 
and then that washed away or was somehow disappeared. And um, at one point we were able to remove one of the bricks, um, the granite concrete blocks, the granite blocks from the exterior, look inside there, we got a camera in there. Um, then we punched a hole through a wall and took a better look in there. And uh, it's really clear that this absolutely must be done. So I'm a little bit, we do, do I, do I need, what do I need to, is this better handled outside of this meeting, but do I need a plan of work or an estimate or something like that? Or can I just apply for funds up to a certain amount or? Um, yeah, um, I, I, Sarah, do you wanna address that? Or I also can, so I, I'm saying that because I'm the representative from the commission on the community preservation committee. Um, Sarah, do you, I'll let you go first though if you wanna address it. Uh, so, so this this application will need um, the commission's determination that the Lilly Library is an important um, historic. Re oh my cat's sitting around. It's an important um, historic resource in Northampton because it's not listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Okay. In addition to support. So, okay. So, so. I guess I can address the rest of the concerns about like the application process and what we actually need uh, to move forward with the application. But can you, can this, so I, as I understood it, the purpose of this, my presence at this meeting is to make a determination that the building is historically important to Northampton. Yeah, correct? yeah. Um, so the, if a building is listed on the National Register, Register of Historic Places, that's the automatic trip for it being eligible for CPA funds. Um, since okay. this isn't, then the, the commission will just need to vote that it is and, and also vote to support the application. Okay. Dylan, do you have a comment? I think it's clearly without a doubt a historically important building. Um, it housed an early kindergarten. It's it's a public library. It opened in 1892. It's, it's vital. The staircase is, is of prime function, both aesthetically and just as functioning part of the building, clearly now more than it has been in years. Um, so I don't think there's any doubt that. I would agree. Craig or Barbara? No, I just would agree with everything Dylan said. I don't think there's any question that we would find that we find it um, culturally, historically significant in many ways. And Craig? I agree to all the above. I would just, Adam, have you had any conversations with any contractors yet? Or is this your first stop to be looking into the- No, um, we've had a, a Mason. Um, we work relatively closely with Construct Associates. So we had a Mason come out um, that was a subcontractor for a Construct and then they decided after looking at it that they needed a structural engineer to come in and give an opinion. Um, and so the structural engineer came in and gave an opinion and uh, sort of a laundry list of possible remedies. Um, and that's where we are now. And so we're waiting for the report back from the structural engineer um, as to really what the best course of action is. And at the time, uh, the middle of last week, um, there seemed to be a front runner, but I'm not exactly sure what the, if this is really the place to discuss that, just if we're just here to establish the historical significance of the building. Well, and also to support the application. So um, just, it, just a couple of things about the CPA process. Um, you, you absolutely should have a budget prepared. Okay. And also, you know, be prepared to submit the reports that you're having done, um, the structural reports, the structural report, the engineer's report, um, and, you know, a justification of why you chose the met method that you did, that would be important as well. Um, one thing that um, I always ask that often comes up is um, whether 
the library has, and I, I don't know how long you've been associated with the library, but if there has ever been any kind of like a historic structures report, sort of an overall analysis of the building itself, which would um, detail, you know, all of the preservation issues, if there are other ones related with it, and where this specific um, project fits in with that. So that would just be something to consider. I don't think that the CPC would not fund this because you haven't completed that, but it would be something that to consider in the future. Yeah, I think if it hasn't been done, I it may have been done when they did the renovation, I guess about 12 years ago, but I'm not aware of it specifically. Right. Um, and, uh, but I definitely do think it would be good because, you know, a few years ago we ran into an issue with the, um, the facade near the top of the building and uh, we had to fix that. So this would be a good way of sort of looking at historic preservation in the building mm -hmm. um, from a planned perspective, like what's likely to come up rather than having it be a surprise, like, oh, the stairs are gonna fall down if we don't do anything about it. Yep, yep. Um, but yeah, so I understand the approach there um, and that's definitely something that I'll bring up with the trustees as soon as I'm able to. Yeah, I would urge you to do that. And that's also something you could apply for CPA funds for as well. It's important. Okay. Like we've done that before. Um, but yeah, this is question. A lot of go ahead, Craig. I'm sorry. Central Services, Sarah, do they have a role in these critical infrastructure buildings around the city to, to be a monitor of problems coming up or not? Uh, only if they are city owned properties which this one is not. Okay. 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 Yes, yeah, so I think this is a beloved building. Um, I don't think anyone would say it's not historically significant. So it's, it's very important in the um, whole context of Florence and the history of Florence and that part of Florence. So uh, I'm all in support of it as well. Okay, so we'll, We'll take a one swipe vote at the end, Adam, you can stay, but it sounds like you're gonna, we will support, give you a support letter. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, and then the other two, Sarah, those are yours. Yes, yeah, so, um, well, mine and the planning department and the commission. So the, the first one is the historic preservation plan, which is something that the commission has talked about for a few years now, um, but it, it seems like it's finally time to put this forward. This um, sustainable Northampton plan isn't being updated at this point, which we initially had been waiting for. There isn't a plan to do that. Um, what I talked with other, um, with Wayne Fine, who's the director of planning and sustainability, and he thought it would make sense just to put this forward now, since it seems like this is something that's getting to be more and more critical, with, um, changing, changing development characteristics in the city and things being lost and things changing. Um, so the planning department will be the project manager for this, um, just from a you know, keep things moving perspective. And since it will ultimately be part of the sustainable Northampton plan, which also serves as the city's master plan, the, the planning board will be the ultimate board that, that approves it, but the historic commission can be as, as involved or, or not involved as it wants to be. questions? I know I, I worked with Martha a, a little bit and Martha I'll, I'll touch base with you afterwards um, about a, an RFP and, and getting this moving a little bit more um, but it just seemed like it was definitely time to put this forward and, and a good time to do it. Questions for Sarah about this? Nope I'm glad it's moving along. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't send a synopsis because the commission's talked about it so much. But it's it's basically the same plan, just with a slightly different management structure, which I think should ultimately be a benefit. Dylan, Barbara, or Dylan, or Paula, Craig, any of you have anything? Sounds great. Sounds like the timing is right. Let's do it. I echo that. I'd, I'd love to see this get underway and. Uh... Maybe, maybe see some on the ground changes around the city. I guess, you. you know, one of the questions would be, you know, are there certain um, elements that you, any of you would like to see are included that maybe haven't been thought of? 
anything you're particularly concerned about from all the work we've been doing the last couple of years, things that have come up, you know, demolition, uh, changing character of neighborhoods. You know, we went through the whole thing on the Warner, um, the Warner Street property recently. Does anybody have anything that comes to mind that they would want Sarah to include? I would love this to have a uh more thought towards creating more local historic districts. I mean, with all the work being gone, gone on in the last 20 years regarding the abolitionists and the old other pre-Civil War era historical discoveries, I mean, why not aim high? I'm a firm believer in aiming high here. And I think there's at least two local historic district potentials in Florence Village Center. Yeah, I, I definitely agree, Craig. And I think this will provide a, a good opportunity to really evaluate not only the city's historic and cultural resources, but also the tools that we have existing and whether they are really achieving the, the goals of the community. And even more importantly, what, what those goals are with regard to historic preservation and our historic resources. So um, like, I've had a few questions about possible changes to the demo ordinance, and this would be a really good opportunity to take a more detailed look at that rather than trying to piecemeal patch things to make it fit a little bit better. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments? Okay, so let's move on to the New Haven and Northampton Canal study. All right, so this is something that's been supported in concept by the Historic Commission, not only recently, but um, far in the past as well. There was a, an effort maybe 25 years ago to try and get the canal listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, an initial study was done, but Mass Historic required the, a, a lot more work that just really wasn't feasible at that time be put together. Um, so we've been working over the last um, year or so with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and the rest of the communities in Massachusetts that the canal went through. Um, we, we finally mapped the route, so we have a digital route, which is something that's never been done before. Um, people have gone out and photographed resources that we do know exist, but there's still a lot of data gaps and we're not able to move this forward to get it listed on the National Register uh, without a targeted reconnaissance survey. Um, so working with PVPC in these communities, again, will be, um, submitting a CPA application to fund Northampton's portion of that at this point, which shouldn't be too much, certainly less than $10,000, but we don't have a, a firm number at this point. Um, I'll be working with PVPC over the next few weeks to really um, finalize the budget and figure out what that will be. Um, so similar to Lilly Library, this is a situation where the commission would have to determine that the canal itself is a important uh, historical and cultural resource to the city and the, the Commonwealth, um, which has been discussed in the past, but not uh, voted on specifically. The, uh, couple of points here. The, I don't know if you've noticed recently, they, they demolished the two locationally deficient obsolete houses on Damon Road near the corner of Route 5. That right next to the railroad, that when they demoed those houses down, I think the canal is visible right at Damon Road. And uh, that used to be in the backyard of those houses. But also the, um, there is a little bit of an interesting thing working here in, in, in Massachusetts uh, with a place with vir virtually no counties or very little regional inter, thinking that there is an effort to actually unify the branding of the canal as a trail today. There has been a, a chosen name. The official chosen name is the one that's going to be that is on the bridge over Route 10. It says New Haven and Northampton Canal Greenway. That will be the umbrella name for the entire project. And there will be local names, like local around here would be the Van Ham Rail Trail. So it will be the umbrella name with the local name so nobody would have to lose their local name. But there's about, a, about seven or eight different names for this thing that will be operating under one umbrella name now so it can be marketed as such. 
and um, there will be a better historic tie-in here too because this is uh, starting to take hold. I thought you'd like to know that little sidebar. Yeah, I think this is a great um, idea. And you know, um, the Erie Canal, um, you know, through Central New York, is has um, kind of developed this concept too, and that they have um, historic markers all the way out, and parts of the old canal are still visible on the sides of the road. And it's just a great, um, it's just a great way to commemorate. Um, one of the questions I had, Sarah, was, is the ultimate goal, well, obviously the National Register listing is part of this. Is there more of a goal than that? I mean, it's really just to document it, at this point what yeah. exists and what the canal mm -hmm. is. Um, and mm -hmm. the farther we get away from the canal, the more of a lost resource it, it's becoming. I, I don't think most people are aware that the canal existed or what the, the purpose of it was. Uh, and if this documentation isn't done at this point, the the entire memory of the canal and, and, and the route and what resources still remain are really in danger of being lost. So, but post documentation, has there been any discussion about, you know, further development, you know, um, signage, uh, interpretive programming? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, there will be, as Craig noted, a tie in to the, to the Greenway um, since the, the railroad was the, the next step after the canal. Um, and then you know, just some branding, uh, perhaps some saving some of the resources that are left. A lot of them have been lost. There's very few locks that remain, but preserving those, once we know where they are and what condition they're in will be important mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Any other questions or thoughts, Barbara, Colleen? No, I think it's, you know, I think it's, a, I think it's great. I remember how surprised I was when I was walking down Elm Street um, I think when I was just a student and I saw the plaque near the church, St. Mary's Church, that said that this is where the canal, the Northampton New Haven Canal was. And I just, I didn't even, I couldn't even imagine there being a canal there, uh, you know? And so it was, you know, and I'm from New Haven, so it had even, you know, more significance to me. But um, to know that that you know Northampton was linked to New Haven, there was a history there, um, and so I just think that yeah, it's important to save it. Uh, you know, whatever um, can be done, you know, whatever remnants are left, uh, you know, just to make note of them. So uh, you know, whoever is passing by, whoever you know notices, will be aware of it. Yeah. Barbara. Yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. So the survey is a great, great place to start. I mean, it's necessary. So I, I think it's great. Dylan? I was just gonna say it's another sort of no brainer. It's clearly historical. We still get questions all the time in the, in the archives about it. Um, and almost all of them end with how can I see it? Um, <laughs> and aside from telling them to like go behind river run and climb through the woods down the old trail <laughs> to the secret beach um, it would be really nice to be able and we have some great maps but um you know it'd be really nice to be able to give a, a solid concrete answer where we can learn right where we can now um it'd be wonderful so that we can move forward with all the Okay, um, well, I think we, that's it, correct? Did I get them all? Um, with that, do we want to do a sweeping? It sounds like the people are pretty much in favor. Um, do we need to vote, Sarah? We need to vote on the historic significance of two of them, correct? Correct. Lily and the canal. Can we take you can do it all as, as one vote. As one, you mean even the support letters and the canal and the significance and the support letters are just the two significance together? I uh, probably the sig two significance together. Okay. And the, the four right. yeah. Can I entertain a motion to um, vote on the significance of both the Lilly Library and the Northampton New Haven Northampton Canal resources? Moved. Someone make a motion, please. So so moved. <laughs> I, so moved. I, I move that. I move that. <laughs> A second. 
Dylan, would you second? Second. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Okay. We're ready to vote, Sarah. Pauline? Yes. Martha? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dylan? I think this is like, is that working? Yes. Okay. Uh, Craig? Okay. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. And then, second of all, a motion to offer support for the five ECPA applications that are presented um, in short form in front of us. I'd be supportive of everything we've heard tonight. I mean, I think it's a good start for this, this grant round to, to have some big, some small, some sustaining, something new, something you know ongoing. So thumbs up. We need a second from somebody. Second, I second. Okay. All right. Any more discussion? Okay, Sarah, I think we're ready to vote. All right. Pauline? Yes. Martha? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dylan? Yes. Craig? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. So the final thing I think we have tonight um, is the demolition review ordinance minor changes. Yeah, and this is more, this is a cleanup piece. There is nothing substantive in this except um, fixing some errors that had come about due to more, some more recent changes. Uh, so I sent this to everybody and let me see if I can share my screen. It doesn't always work. Um, this, I was a little confused by this, to be honest with you, because I wasn't okay. sure. I was, I was wondering why you never like, to do a demolition, so that's why I was confused. Okay, so the um, the administration piece, the one sixty one six, so this had to deal with appointments to the historical commission. This just doesn't belong in the the demolition ordinance. Oh, okay, that, that just um, makes sense. <laughs> so this isn't a substantive change. It, it's not doing anything. It's just recognizing that this is now in the city's administrative code and and doesn't go here with the city's cha charter change. Um, the next one, the Office of Planning and Development is now planning and sustainability. And then removing D, this was a requirement prior to the date shift to 1945 that asked the commission to put together the list of significant buildings from 1901 to 1939. And that no longer applies. So that is being removed as well. Does anyone have questions about it? But does that list is that not used anymore? I mean, wouldn't that still apply? All of those buildings would... are now subject to the demolition ordinance since the date is- Oh, right, right, sorry, because it's been extended. Okay, right. Yeah. So that's it. So that really, FYI, nothing substantive. Anybody else? Okay. Um, do we need to vote, Sarah? Nope. Um, just an information piece. Okay. Um, and then th the emergency demolition of the Winter Street Barn, is that not happening tonight? Uh, so that was, that was something that already happened. The building department ordered this down as a public safety measure. Okay. Um, so I, I guess they, I don't know how, how this originated, if it was from the, the owner or if the building department noticed it, but they determined this to be an immediate safety concern. So I don't even know if the building is still standing at this point. So when that's done though, does anybody take any photographs before something yes, is demolished? Yes, I, I do have some and I can forward those. They're not, um, they're not great photos, but okay. the, but the building department didn't even want to go into the barn. So right. they're all well, just even to document it from the outside, that would be good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Been done. Any mail, Sarah? There is not. Okay. Nobody gets any mail anymore anyway. <laughs> um, the only mail we, we seem to get these days is section 106 reviews. And there is one of those on the agenda at um, the hearing a, a week from tonight, which I'll, I didn't want to confuse the, the two agendas. So I'll send you the meeting materials for that one tomorrow. Okay. So um, just before we adjourn, um, to remind everyone, we do have another meeting coming up. It's the third. Is that right? 
That's a report. Yes, it is. Yeah, a week, from, week from today. No, not a week from today, I apologize. A week from Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so just so everyone remembers to, to get that on their calendar because it might, um, it might get lost. <laughs> There's a lot going on, but it's an important, um, important meeting, so. Okay. I think um, it's 8, 6.58 and we did everything we needed to do. And I think we can adjourn. All right, great. See you on the third. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.